Well, howdy, friends and floorheads. It is early on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon for my friends on the other side of the ocean. It seems like it's been 10 years since we've played, but it's only been a month uh, or two months. Right? Yeah. A month and change. So I think uh, our keeper needs to kind of bring us up to speed. So Brian, the show is yours, sir. All righty. Well, uh, our investigators have been looking into something odd that happened to the father of their uh, of their current patron uh, back in uh, August of 1924. They've been doing some investigation in Savannah, has brought them to Los Angeles, where they've been investigating a cult which back in the day was run by a man named Ramon Echevarria. Um, they have talked to everyone from bums on the street corner to uh, movie stars and eventually have found their way to one um, Samson Trammell, who seems to be the head of the current incarnation of the cult. And being people of action, uh, they elected to break into his mansion and look around to see what they could find. Um, what they have found so far are some people with guns and some slightly more unpleasant things. As we pick back up, it is at the moment quiet in the foyer of the Trammell Mansion. Uh, you know, uh, James and Sal are there. Your ears are still ringing with the barrage of small arms fire. Um, you know, adrenaline is still thumping through your ears. Um, both of you uh have some blood soaking into you from various wounds nothing too serious yet um and there's also a fair amount of blood spilled across the the marble floor uh from the the guards or thugs whatever they are that you have managed to uh to take down um we see sal kind of crouch behind a marble pillar at the top of the stairs it's not big enough to really hide him but there are some bullet holes in it so it has done its job to some extent um James is kind of pushed up against the wall next to the front door. Um, he can hear a couple voices, uh, at least two, maybe more, uh, muttering in Spanish just outside the door. Um, upstairs, uh, Dr. Adrian is hovering near the top of the back stairway where they've heard uh, a slow set of creaking footsteps as of someone trying to come up the stairs very quietly. Uh, without being heard and no, not being as successful as they would have liked. And then Alice uh, has just sort of unscrewed the hasp of the padlock that was uh, keeping one of the hallway doors shut, uh, swung the door open, uh, and there is a linen closet. Uh, and on the back wall of it, there is a disembodied mouth, for lack of a better term, uh, that just screamed shrilly at her as she opened it and exposed it to the light. So the first thing I'd like to do is have Alice make us a stability test. Um, your target number is going to be five, and if you fail, it is going to be a five-point stability hit. <laughs> this is the first time anybody has gotten a look at one of these things up close, and it is extremely unpleasant and unnatural. Okay. Um... I'll spend two, I think. That okay. gives me a 50 50 chance. Yep, I like that. Um, and otherwise, I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. okay. So, I mean, um, Alice has, has gotten a glimpse of something like this before. So, while it's certainly shocking, it's not, uh, you know, it, it hasn't completely uh, thrown you off your game. Um, so you've seen this thing and it's it's screamed at you. What does Alice do? Um and it's in the back wall of the of mm -hmm. the closet. Mm -hmm. Uh so it I think are there what's can I in, in the split second that I see it, what else can I see in the closet? I mean, uh, honestly, there are towels and sheets piled yeah. up. There's there's like a, a pile of them kind of loose on the floor that looks like it may have yeah. like gotten knocked loose from in front of this thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty ordinary closet other than the disembodied screaming mouth. Okay. Um, is there a... I can imagine that she might, you know, just try and grab the... Sh if it's a shelf or a... Um, that That's standing that she grab it and try and push it in front of it or um it, not really i mean you can 
uh, yeah, their their shelves kind of inset mm -hmm. into. It. I mean, you can certainly shove some uh, mm -hmm. shove some towels or something in front of it. Well, I, perhaps she'll just slam the door shut again and just put her back against it and say, "Okay, we're not." And she'll look towards Adrian and say, "I don't think we want to go in there." <laughs> All right, so you you slam the door, and as you do, you hear something sort of thump into the the inside of the door with that sound like a bird hitting a windshield mm -hmm. and it just you know and you can hear this kind of slow hissing sound from from inside there uh but the door has latched and and holds although it's no longer locked okay yeah so um, she's sliding down the wall looking to adrian and saying i don't know <laughs> you all right I think we may have found what we're looking for. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. I just, just need one second. <laughs> Hello, uh, there, friend. Can... Oh. <laughs> and and the footsteps stop. And after a moment, you hear a voice saying, "Who is that?" I poke my head over. And you can see there's another one of these um, Hispanic gentlemen, um, you know, who is who is kind of creeping up. He's got a revolver in his hand um, and, um, you know, looks like the type that is probably ready to use it. Um, mm -hmm. But he sees you and he immediately points the gun at you, although he doesn't fire. Come out. Oh, sorry, sort man. I'll take a second. Okay. Oh, can you say it again? Sorry, man, I back up for a bit. Oh, he's uh, he's he's pointing the gun at you, uh, though, though he's not shooting anything. And he says, come out, sort of gesturing with the gun. All right. And Alice, you can see this going on, although you're obviously not sure who, she, who he's talking to. <laughs> just point it, just Alice, just like as he's, all right. <laughs> Alice is going to start backing, backing past the door, back the corridor, like, Okay, so you're backing away. Yeah. All right, and um, as you, as you know, so this guy starts coming up the stairs, you know, keeping the gun trained on on Adrian, and says, "What are you doing here?" Um, not quite sure, honestly, at this point. I think we got ourselves into something we shouldn't have, quite. <laughs> yes, yes, you have, and he sort of, um, again, gestures with the gun for you to precede him down the stairs. All right. Where are we going? Down, he says. You're so terribly vague. <laughs> All right, then. I'll come with you. Very well. Okay. She says loudly. Um, yeah. All right. So, and then at this point, um, this guy is leading or, or following Adrian down the stairs and Alice is backed up a little bit here. I'm not too p concerned about the map. I just want to keep a general idea of where people are. Um, meanwhile, out in the foyer, um, you know, no one seems to be making any immediate effort to, to rush the door or anything like that. Um, but uh, James and Sal, you both kind of hear a door you know, sounds like a door banging open from somewhere farther in the house. And uh, after a few moments, a man kind of stalks out uh, over here. Let me see if I make him visible now. Um, from from around this corner, James can see him. Sal can't, but you can you can hear the conversation. And he's you know a, a you know handsome, uh, well dressed man. Um, well, I say well dressed. He's got you know his a uh, dress shirt on with the sleeves rolled up and the collar loose, and there's a tie kind of hanging loosely around his neck. Um, below the waist, he appears to be wearing black dress socks uh, and nothing else. And <laughs> uh, thankfully, he has long shirt tails. So, okay. Uh, you know that. Um, and he he basically comes stalking out into this this sort of big foyer area, and he says, "I can't work with all of this noise, Captain. Yeah, I want you to take these people, get them downstairs, and deal with." 
And then at that point, he stops and appears to notice James and a number of dead bodies in the foyer. And he just says, who the hell are you? So I'm going to I'm going to stand up, kind of mm-hmm. look to Sal just to kind of make quick eye contact with you uh, and and point the gun at him mm-hmm. and uh, say, we're leaving. Good. Said, but you're coming with us. No. No, I'm not. Yeah, so I'm walking up. Gunpoint. Okay, when, when you start approaching, he darts back the way he came. So um, that's good. All you right, have, you have gonna, time I, to take a shot at him if you want to do that. Uh, I don't think I do. I think I want to follow him. Okay. Uh, Sal, what are you doing while this is going on? Uh, I'm going to keep uh, Sal's going to keep his attention on the front door. Okay. Um, there's probably some unexpected company. They probably aren't Girl Scouts selling cookies. <laughs> this is true. All right. So James is heading back this way to keep an eye on this guy. Um, Sal, around that time, you know, you, you, uh, you know, there's that shouted conversation and um, you can see um, the one of the front doors kind of creaks open and there's another of the these guard types kind of coming in a little bit wide-eyed you know gun out looking around to try and see what's going on he he sees the bodies but he's more looking at people that are going up and then you see him taking aim at presumably james all right i will send a 38 caliber bullet straight to that his head sounds like an appropriate response at this time okay let's see what my pool remaining is I will spend one point. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do three this. to hit him. Uh, let's see here. That's a test. Wait, so I'll, I'll, off the weapon, correct? Yeah, yeah. Do it off the weapon. Yep. Okay. Suspense, she's kidding me. I believe that's correct. Uh, any range penalties or, or anything like that? Uh, no, this is this is short range, so it's it's unmodified. Okay. Okay. I don't see where to spend it at. Um, let me see. I'm on the weapon sure. sheet, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You should be able, uh, if you, you know, because it's got like the 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 three buttons there. Um, if you hit like the the plus modifier next to the, the little die button, that should let you spend a die from or a spend a point from your firearm spool to the right of the uh, damage modifiers under equipment. Yep, I see that. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Okay. Um, so you um, you hit him, um, and it it you know shot gets him in the the non firing shoulder, so he's hurt, uh, but he's not down. Um, it certainly draws his attention away from James. However, okay. um, James, you hear the gunshot. Um, yeah, startled by it. Um, mm-hmm. I was not anticipating that because I think I heard the gunshot before I heard or recognize that that guy was there yes so for me it's just like sal's just shooting so i'm Mm -hmm. I'm immediately like turning my head to where the shot came from but shielding myself because i don't know if he's someone shooting at me and see see what's happening um am i in a position to in any way see who i was going after or is he out of my sight um you can catch a glimpse of him it looks like he's going through this door and then around the corner into what turns out to be this room here Okay, so I, in my head, I'm assuming he's dead ending. Um, I have someone who uh, we've got a firefight, so I'm going to yes. shoot shoot at our friend as well. Okay, seems reasonable. So we are at you said short range. Yep. All right. Um, 
got four bullets left. I'm going to do this unmodified because I don't think I have a chance to aim or anything. So let's roll it. Hit him anyway. Yeah. With good instincts. All right. So that's... Uh... Uh, oh, I think you rolled the point blank for the extra damage, but that's fine. Um, you still do enough damage to oh, to take blank, him out. Sorry. He was still kind of, you know, staggering back from Sal's shot, and you kind of hit him, and he slams up against the wall and slides down. Beautiful. So he is out of the picture. Um, Adrian, uh, in the back corner, you hear... Um, uh, you hear the gunfire. I mean, you probably heard some shouted voices, although you couldn't hear exactly what was being said. Um, and then you hear a couple of gunshots, uh, a couple of more gunshots, I should say, from the foyer. Um, the guy behind you kind of uh, pushes you into the kitchen. Um, you know, and... in my professional opinion, it's never the best idea to go into things head first, but I thought I'd trust them because I know about more about this than me, but... You should always trust your own instincts on these things. <laughs> um, he doesn't especially seem to be listening to you. Um, he kind of he kind of goes there and uh, you know, kind of kind of shoves you into the corner and says, "Don't move," and then kind of heads over towards the door here. Um, he, you get the impression that he has not seen you as much of a threat, since, as far as I know, the only weapon you seem to be carrying is an umbrella. Technically. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he, he heads over there and Alice, you again, hear some shouted words and some gunfire. Um, the hissing seems to have stopped from inside the closet. Uh, Adrian is out of sight. What would you like to do? I think, um, Alice is clenching her, um, handbag, which has a heavy rock in it and finding that quite inadequate. Um, and I doesn't wanna... think... I seem to recall you picked up a kitchen knife at one point as uh, well. Oh, kitchen knife? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then I've got a kitchen knife. But um, she's, you know, she doesn't want to leave Adrian, um, but she doesn't want to get shot either. Uh, mm -hmm. I think she may just look at the doors in the... Uh, I think she's going to try and find some... See if she can find something else helpful and just really quickly try all the door handles in mm -hmm. the um, in the in the hallway. Just, you know, will they open, open and look in, hey... Can I, do I see something that might be useful, weapon-like, or something like that? Really cursory looks. Yeah, I mean, the, the first one you open is um, what looks like, um, you'd guess, a servant's quarters kind of thing. And it looks like there is someone sleeping in the bed, or, or was sleeping yeah. in the bed. The gunfire has apparently mm -hmm. awoken them. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a middle-aged guy kind of pressed up against the wall with the sheets drawn up. And he says, ha, ha. What do you want? I said, I said, stay here. It's safe here. And close the door again. Okay. Move to the next one. <laughs> All right. So we'll move on with that progression. Um, James, uh, the immediate threat seems to have been dealt with. Yeah. So we're going to go, we're going to go back into pursuit mode. Okay. Um, so you head over to here ish. Are you yep. okay? There you are. You weren't, you weren't on the map for a minute. I want to make sure. All right. So you make your way over there. Um, and what you can see is that kind of uh, big L shaped room mm -hmm. that you're looking at seems to be a library. And there's a lot of uh, very old books and, you know, paintings and, and artworks and tchotchkes and things. Uh, and then the room off to your right, um, well, the door's closed. So you can't tell what's going on in there. But so, you're pretty sure that's where he went. Yeah, so I'm going to quickly go past the door just mm -hmm. to check the rest of the room so I can get see the whole room and kind of do, in my head, I'm, you know, clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, yeah. go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, obviously feel free to move yourself around. I'm just kind of estimating to keep track of people. Yeah, and then I go to the door handle, figuring mm -hmm. this is where they went through. Mm -hmm. Gun ready, and then as fast as I can, Turn the handle, push it open, gun pointed. It is locked. Son of a biscuit. I'm going <laughs> to kick it. Okay. Uh, give me a I kick doors roll. I kick which, doors roll. I don't know if there's a specific skill for that, but we could certainly do something like athletics. Yeah. Let's just see if there's anything else strength based. I'm trying to. 
No, I think that makes sense. Unless really? it, um, yeah, athletics. I'm good with athletics. Yeah, I think uh, so. And we're going to call it target number five because it's pretty sturdy. Okay. Let's go ahead and spend two points. Yay, adrenaline. And give it a roll. There we go. Mm -hmm. James has kicked open many a door in his day. Uh, and so basically, you know exactly where to aim your foot uh, to get the the maximum leverage that just bang it flies open uh, and you're there with the gun and you see the uh, the pantsless gentleman kind of gathering up a bunch of papers from the desk okay and he, he immediately freezes and stares at you put the papers down and turn around he, he, he starts putting the papers down and says we can talk about this i have a lot to offer you you know turn around He turns around and say, all right, up against the wall and tell me what you need to tell me. Okay. While this is going on, uh, Sal, you still holding position up top? Yeah, I need to do a reload really quick if I got time. So I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm you've reload. probably got a moment. And, and as you're reloading, um, you can see that the door is still kind of open or ajar from where that guy came. And what you see coming around the door is the muzzle of a rifle. Ooh. Um, so somebody is, is very slowly kind of pushing the door open with their rifle and trying to see, you can't get a look at who it is yet. Um, but someone is definitely scanning the scene. <laughs> you don't know where James is at this point. Um, but uh, but that situation is you kind of feverishly put the bullets back in your gun. Yep. Um, Adrian, back in the kitchen. Um, this guy is is kind of moving up to the door. He kind of occasionally glances over in your direction, uh, but is mostly trying to f focus on what's going on out in the front door. And he sort of pushes the kitchen door open a little bit and doesn't. I, uh, Senor, if you may hear a humble doctor's request. <laughs> Shut up, he says. Oh, it's just that there's a lovely old lady outside, and I just want to check on her. You stay here. Are you going to go check on her? He he kind of just shakes his head angrily and then pulls the door open and, and steps out into the, the main foyer area. So you are now alone in the kitchen. Nobody ever seems to listen these days. <laughs> You're just going to be kind of walking around the kitchen, trying to think of what to do next, trying to figure out if they go outside or go back in. Or... Okay. He's just looking at all the exits, trying to get a read of their of the room they're in, essentially. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and then we are back to Alice. Um, I think Alice is still checking... She's moved Still... on to the next room, but okay. I think she's starting to look. For, does she's thinking about? We need distractions. We need to, and there's, and that thing in the room is not natural. Um, True. She might be looking for stuff that's incendiary. Mm. Not okay. yet, but she's just she's just okay. She'll open the rooms. Perhaps it's part distraction, but you know, I need to find something. Yeah, um, and basically most of these rooms uh, on this on this hallway are our servants' quarters, and most of them have people in them who are awake and terrified. Um, you know, as far as flammable things, there's you know sheets and that sort of thing. Um, but, I think uh, then just every time she and there's this terrified uh, uh, servant, and she's mm -hmm. just like in a very she's getting more calm herself is like stay here and you'll be safe stay here and you'll be safe and just closing the door again and okay trying to gear up her courage to go down after adrian or towards south okay seems reasonable um yeah so you're working your way through those um so james this guy says um, I have, I have a lot to offer you. This has been a terrible misunderstanding, but believe me, I have, I have connections you don't want to cross and I can make your life very easy. 
or extremely difficult. Tell me how you're going to make it easy. How much do you want? Oh, you think this is a money thing? If it's not a money thing, tell me what it is. Do you want nectar? You want women? What are you looking for? Well, and I, and I'm I'm going to try to like extend this conversation a little bit, mm -hmm, right? And, mm -hmm. and gun is still in my right hand, but with my left hand, I'm trying to get papers and try to find like, is there a box or something that I can toss these papers as much documentation into? Yeah, because it looks like what he was focusing on is there's basically a big pile of papers and they're some of them are held together with like rubber bands or paper clips and some of them are like loosely bound into some kind of binder and some of them are just loose but they seem to be a unit for lack of a better term um looking at it it's it seems like it's a lot of handwritten documentation um there are a lot of weird stains on the pages um which you maybe don't want to look too closely at right now because there's a lot going on and um, yes, yeah, so that seemed to be what he's concerned with. There's not, um, I mean, the whole thing seems like it isn't kind of like a big, um, just like a loose leaf folder that okay. you could sort of fold up and carry. It's not the most convenient, but it's better than nothing. I'm going to try to pick up as much as I can with my left mm -hmm. hand, keeping the gun on him. And uh, so who am I? If it's a psychological assessment you're looking for, we've only just met. What's my name? I don't know. Great answer. Do not move. I'm going to start stepping back to exit. Okay. Um, why don't you give me just a general purpose intimidation role to see yep. how well he takes to your instructions? I get a plus 50 because of the gun. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you said intimidation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have intimidation, so what is it called? What kind of cop are you if you don't have intimidation? No, you should. Uh, that should oh, it, oh, you yeah. I, I, that's it's, just the yeah. spend. Gotcha. Oh, that's right. That's a that's a general skill. I'm yeah. looking at a master list here. Yeah. So if you spend a point of intimidation, he will he will kind of stay put. Done. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're backing out with the folder. Um, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll cut away to Sal. Um, Sal, you can see that this, you know, whoever it is on the other side of the door, um, has the thing fully open and is kind of swept and you can kind of get a look at him now. He looks like a little older guy than most of the other guard types you've seen. You can uh see he's got like what looks like some kind of scar across his cheek and he it looks like he sees someone and kind of uh makes some gestures like you know you that way uh you can't see who he's pointing at obviously um and then he you know having sort of swept the ground floor he basically starts scanning across the railing where he might see you you know, he's kind of starting at the at the far side and moving towards where you are. Uh, what would you like to do? I would like to shoot him. Man, I, that's your answer to everything, yeah. Sal. Well, no, to be fair, sometimes your answer is stab him. So I'll, yes, I'll, yes, I'll take it. I try to keep it buried. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going to be TN four to hit him. Okay, I'm not going to make any spins at this point because I'm down to my last point of fire. Yeah, spin. conserve is a thing. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, let's just do this. All right, well, it uh, it hits the door frame right next to his head, and he ducks out and ducks back. Okay, was I able to get my reload off? Yeah, yeah, you were okay. reloaded. So this is the first first of a new a new batch of rounds. Okay. Um, right, so. Uh, he ducks out of sight, but at least you know he's out here now. Yep. Um, okay, and James, you hear that shot, obviously. Yep. Um, let's see. This fellow over here, does he see James, or is he too focused over there? 
No, he definitely sees James. Uh, so he sees you backing out of the study or whatever it is over here. Um, and he's going to go ahead and take a shot at you. Not good. That's nah, probably fine. Uh, you've you've been shot a bit before, as I recall. Uh, so this doesn't make going... it better. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm. This bullet will knock the other bullet out. <laughs> right, exactly. See, it's only two points of damage. It's hardly it's enough to even a... worry about. It's only a flesh wound. All right, that puts mm -hmm. me down to four. Okay, you don't have any negative effects until you hit zero. So, yep, this is fine. Um, is... so you know, in maybe that happens as I'm trying to close the door um, mm -hmm. uh, to leave Captain Underpants uh, in, in the room. <laughs> And you know, I get I get shot. It hits me, and right. so immediately I, whatever part of the door had not been closed, I mm -hmm. slam it closed, and I'm going to try to go around that L to get covered. Oh, okay, got it. Very cool, um, Adrian. There is a very close gunshot outside the the other door of the kitchen. All right then. I think. Adrian will not follow instructions and stay put in the corner. I'm um, shocked. Shocked. <laughs> shock horror. I know. Um, and I'm uh, okay. So did would he fully close the door or is it kind of still open? Um, it's it's one of those doors that kind of it's a swinging door that kind of resets to a closed position. Mm -hmm. Okay then. Hmm. Which way do I go? Which way do I go? Oh, there's so much happening. There's so yes. much happening that he's not prepared for. That he's never had to deal with. This, wow. is, this is not Adrian's area of expertise. Not exactly, no. Um, well, I guess we're in the kitchen, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to find a, just a bottle of anything. Sure, easily done. Um, and we'll kind of just try to sneak up to the door that um, his new friend is um, on the other side of. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that with the, the sound of gunfire out there, it's probably easy enough for you to sneak. I'm yeah, need, that's what I was thinking. Is... That. Yeah. Um, so you're going to wait there? Um, oh, I just didn't know if I had the like, turn of comment to actually try and hit him with it. That, oh, yeah, you can, you can totally oh, yeah, do that. I'm going to try, gonna gonna, right, cool. try to hit him with the glass bottle. Excellent. That would be um, probably scuffling, <laughs> since it's scuffling? an improvised weapon. All right. Your target number is going to be three to hit him. Okay. Um, and just to be safe, because I don't imagine he's going to be doing much more combative after mm -hmm. this, he's <laughs> going to use his two scuffling. Okay. Uh, boop, boop. Actually, no. I, 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 yeah. hmm. Do I want to test it? I want to test it. Okay. No, I no, I care too much about my friends. I'm going to use both. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I didn't have to test it. Oh, well, it's all good. Uh, yeah, so you so you hit him. Uh, now give me a damage roll. It's going to be a d6 minus one, because the bottle is not the most fatal of weapons. Not the most, no. And Let's Mac, you can just hit the d6 icon and then hit the minus below that to make it minus one. Perfect. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Twice. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you hit him square in the back of the head, and he just goes, oh, and collapses to the floor. They never ever listen. <laughs> I love it. And now it's just kind uh, of out in the open. No, no mm -hmm. time to go back. So we're just kind of out in the open with the shattered glass bottle and just. Yep. No, honestly, I think that that hit was so solid that the bottle is probably still intact. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. Um, the reverb. Yeah, exactly. Um, Alice. So, so Adrian Oops, just sorry. hit hit the guy that was shooting at me. Yeah. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, not not that you can see it yet, but uh, right. yeah, there there is uh, that that seems to be neutralized. Um, and then Alice, you've pretty much made your way down the hallway here. Uh, you know, some of the rooms are occupied, mm -hmm. some of them are, are empty, but you've you've I didn't really find anything of use. Nothing that. unique in them. Yeah. Um, I'll look at the closed door for the mouth again, and then just you know head down the stairs and kind of whisper call like. Adrian, Adrian, 
<laughs> and just make my way down, the, you know, cautiously down the stairs, looking around like, yeah. Yeah, I would say Adrian probably isn't going to hear a whisper yeah. having had the recent gunfire yeah. going on. Um, then our friend at the front door, um, well, let's see, he's probably going to see Adrian, but also Sal just shot at him. Um, so he is going to pivot around the edge of the door and take a shot back at okay. Sal. Um, right. There we go. All right. And once again, the pillar saves the day um, as a, a, you know, big 30 out six rifle bullet slams into okay. it, but it does not slam into Sal. Uh, I need to just not care? look at the foundry names right now. I just need to not look at those. <laughs> Oh, well, it's fine. I, I, you know, it, it will become clear soon enough. Um, yeah. And um, Sal, would you care to retort? Indeed, I would. <laughs> I yell, I "Have at the good you. sir!" And pull the... <laughs> <laughs> um, I will spend my last point with this. So okay, seems reasonable. Um, let me go here. Um, spend one. All right. Well, damage is getting there. Um, you definitely hit him. <clears throat> you know, you you hear uh, the sound of bullet hitting flesh rather than wood, and he he kind of ducks back around the door a little bit, but he's definitely taken some damage. Uh, he he looks like he's made of somewhat sterner stuff than the other guys, but uh, mm -hmm. he definitely doesn't want any more of that right now. Uh, James, you've taken cover from that gunfire. You hear another larger caliber uh, yes. gunshot going out out there. Well, a couple shots, but at least one. Realizing that th that wasn't what shot at me and hit me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. turning around the corner and I assume I <laughs> see my friend <laughs> on the ground and I see Dr. Adrian. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to <laughs> run into, run towards... And I think I, I, I don't think I stop. I think I run directly for you, Doc. Um, and I'm, I, I'm like gesturing for you to take these papers <clears throat> out of my arm. Okay. And then I'm going to shove you into the kitchen. <laughs> like, like Adrian's about to say company at the front door. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, turn around and assess the situation. Um, All right. So basically, uh, Adrian, do you let yourself be shoved? <laughs> I, d I don't know what much choice Adrian has. They're a little twig. That's uh, that's so fair. Me... James is, is yeah. a fairly burly fellow. So yeah, oh, look, Alice is it. here. Okay. You're over here. And um, yes, you can see, James, that the front door is open. And you can see just kind of like the edge of someone like up against the door. All right, my hands are free now. Um, let's take a quick look at our situation. We still have three bullets left, so I don't think James would take this time to reload, uh, but I will take it, take this time to, to shoot. Understanding that I probably am not gonna hit him. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gonna be difficult because I only see a sliver of him, but I wanna right. make it clear. Now you have two people shooting at you. More like a, a discouraging fire Correct. kind of thing. All right, go ahead and give me a, uh, it's going to be, yeah, it'll be target number four, because again, yeah. full cover is, is the only cover that really matters. Well, that's oh, going to hit. Oh, look at you. Oh, I just did a firearms. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, let me roll the uh, damage. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be that plus one. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, again, you don't hit him too hard, but uh, it is still definitely contact. Uh, and you, you see him sort of edge farther away from the door. How you doing, Sal? Uh, I can use some pastrami right about now. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to start walking towards the front door with the okay. gun ready. So if, if this guy so much as puts an eyelash around the corner, I'm popping mm -hmm. a shot. Mm -hmm. um, 
you hear a voice uh, shouting from from somewhere over here. Walker, stop him! He's got the testament. Um, and Walker, if that is indeed who this is, um, does not seem to be inclined to stick his head around the door again at the moment. And do I hear Captain Underpants? Can I see Captain Underpants? Do I just hear? Him? Uh, you do not see him. You just hear him. Okay. All right. So I'm going to quickly flash like where the voice came from to make sure that he's not in the room with me. Mm-mm. Um, Sal, I'm going to gesture for you to get back up the stairs. Hopefully, Sal's still at the top of the stairs. He, you can't actually see him from where you are. He's like I on can a balcony above you. You cannot. Okay. Um, I don't want to like, yell instructions. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep walking and keep kind of looking up, knowing where Sal is. I, I want to try to make eye contact with Sal at some point, but but I but I'm not. It's just a flash check where I mm-hmm. am staying very focused, yeah, focused looking on the door. forward at Walker. Got it. Um, okay. Um, Sal, uh, you've heard all this exchange. What would you like to do? Um, currently no target, correct? Uh, correct. Um, actually, hold on. You have sense trouble. Yeah, everybody in this party has sense trouble. Why would you not? Um, you notice that uh, this door that James is approaching sort of under the stairs, which you took to be maybe a coat closet or something, um, is slightly ajar, and there is another guy lurking in there. Okay. Um, Did I see him go in? Can I give... I mean, is it a... Uh, You didn't see him go in. It looks like... Um, it's, it's hard to tell, but it looks like there might be another stairway going down under the stairway going up. Okay. So I was going to be clear. I'm headed towards the front door. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I was going to kind of lean over the balcony a bit, take a shot into that. Okay. All right. Target number is three. Um, so James, you're, you're kind of coming along here. Um, you know, again, uh, you're, you're focusing on the front door. You're flicking your eyes up to try and get a look at Sal. And just as you get a look at Sal, he's kind of leaning over with his pistol, puts a bullet, goes right past your head into the door frame of this door next to you. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's there now. Door is open and I can see somebody. Uh, door is yes, you can actually see a guy that's all there. right. Got two shots left. Okay, you're gonna put one in him. I am. Uh, let's go ahead and spend a point. Mm-hmm. Okay, that'll hit. Oh, Ooh. yeah, no, you you tell me where you shoot him because he is dayed. Uh, I, I, I think I, I hit him like it. it, it above the neck Um, okay yeah he just you know thud against the wall and slides down and you can see that there is indeed another stairway going down under this it's just a quick glimpse so and you tell me timing wise what what's doing but here's what's going through james's head is i Mm -hmm. am i want to close the front door Mm -hmm. so i'm walking up to the front door gun ready in case walker comes around I'm going to shoot him if I see him. If I don't see him, I'm going to close that front door, assuming it closes, uh, opens in towards me. It does. And and then I want to get up to where Sal is. Um, all right. So that's that's so, my purpose. All right. For right now, we're going to cut back to the kitchen yep. uh, where we have a slightly, you know, perplexed Adrian holding this loose bundle of papers uh, and Alice uh, just creeping down the stairs from upstairs. Alice is going to see Adrian and say... Adrian, are you all right? What have you got there? I'm fine. Um, James handed me these papers. He said he said for me to hold on to them. Okay, then they must be important. Um, Should we make we it to the car? Get ready, get ready to start the car? Or? I think they're still, and we can hear the gunshots going off. I'm mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, there's definitely still gunfire yeah. going on. I think that I think that there's still there's still stuff going. We we can't get out right now. Um, all right. Put put the papers away. And she's going to look around the kitchen. Um, hey Alice, you have a bag, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, but, give me here. Yeah. 
then go back up. Don't let them. Don't let them see you come through that door. They won't know that you came down here. They know that I went. They know that I went through that door, so they'll know that I could have had the papers. You keep them. I'll, I'll take the papers and kind of distractedly, and I'm looking around the kitchen. Is it a gas stove? <laughs> oh god. Oh, that's one of the classic role-playing questions. That's right up there with, what is this building made of? (laughs) Um, Alice. I mean, I think it probably would be. What would be cutting edge in the 30s? I mean, yeah, it could conceivably be electrical, but it's probably gas. We have an old lady tied up in the garden. We're just going to set this place on fire with the old lady in the garden. The second thing that she, um, we're not setting it on fire yet. (laughs) <laughs> it's just, I'm going to say is that there's people out upstairs they need to get out so um, and she's she's going to turn on the knobs she's going to turn on the knobs and say okay. no let's get the you, let's get the people upstairs out okay all right no, and we'll go with Alice all right so you're both heading back upstairs to start the evacuation yeah and we and we've Turned on all the knobs. Yes, I, I, I got it. <laughs> the fire won't kill them. It's going to be the explosion. Right, well, exactly. That, that'll take a while before it goes off. So. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Sal, where are we with you? Uh, still covering the front door. Kind okay. of, uh, you know, checking behind him every few seconds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, there doesn't seem to be anybody else up here. He actually saw me, so I'm going to transition to the other pillar. Got it. Uh, and I will say that when you get over there, he does not appear to be just outside the door anymore. Um, James, you are able to get to the front door and close it. Okay. Okay. I want to head up to get to Sal. Actually, let me see something real quick. Okay. Uh, All right. So, yeah, you are able to close the door and make your way up to where Sal is. We need to get out of here. And I'm going to kind of gesture the way we came in, right? That back back staircase. Sounds like a plan. All right. Uh, so through the power of, uh, of coincidence and combined effort, we find everybody in this back hallway. <laughs> so I see, see Alice and Adrian coming up the steps. The exact opposite of what I want them to be doing. <laughs> and I'm oh, like, no, no, we're leaving. We're leaving we get back people, door the way we came we're in. Keep, we're we're, people we got to get, get people, these people need to get out of here as well. So, and I just, you know, I'm opening a door and say, it's not safe. Out the back door. Out the back door. Just Alice, to... take, Alice is taking a bit of an interest in pyrotechnics. We just need to get everyone out of here. <laughs> oh Jesus! So, all right. Th- these people. I'm... These people. They're not. They're not goons. So just I'm throwing out... throwing doors open and and, and participating mm-hmm. in the evac. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Hey, they're bullet shields. I'm okay with it. <laughs> That's our Sal. Ricardo. Um. All right. So the plan is then to sort of usher, uh, you know, chivy everybody out the back door. Yeah, down this back steps, and out the back door. Yeah, out the back door. Okay. And by that time, I think if once we start moving through the kitchen, there is a distinct smell of gas. It's not perhaps overwhelming, but... But you can very, tell it's I'm, there for sure. You can tell it's there. And I think that um, I'm guessing that uh, Sal and James would, would recognize that. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I know I now can't shoot my gun. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Um, all right, so you and the uh, the handful of servants you've got, um, uh, and they are, you know, as you might expect, half dressed, panicky, terrified, um, you know, praying to each other in Spanish or with each other. Um, but you manage to get everybody out the back door where there is another um, <laughs> there is another uh, woman tied up who you've met on the way in. Um, what's the plan once everybody's outside? Um, Adriel, start un- untying the woman. Okay. Yeah, untie the woman. Get the servants to, you know, pushing them. Go down the lawn. Mm-hmm. You know, pointing them down the lawn. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, look towards James. 
and say, light it up. Let we got to run to the car. That should keep them busy. All right. So I, I'm going to just, Sal, take them, take them, okay. get to the car. I'm going to get what I perceive to be a safe distance. Mm -hmm. um, I currently have two shots in the chamber. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to aim through the door at something metal. Okay. And make a spark. And make a spark. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to roll for that. I think it is cinematically appropriate um for uh the uh you know you 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 strike a spark and you can see the kitchen sort of up into a into a fireball um it doesn't seem like it spread significantly to the rest of the house yet but the kitchen is on fire now beautiful uh, so it certainly will spread if it's not taken care of um and then um, Sal, you and Adrian and Alice are headed for the car. Yep. Is that my understanding? Um, okay. Uh, so you're making your way across the lawn. I think you guys like jumped the fence at one point. Um, while you are going across there, you hear the crack of a rifle. Uh, and that is going to hit Sal Ow. for, come on, give me numbers. Three damage. Okay. Uh, and it, it looks like whoever this guy is with the rifle has kind of taken cover among the ornamental shrubbery and has just basically set up a, a field of fire as you guys are crossing the lawn. Uh, do you keep running? Do you return fire? What's the what's the plan? I'm going to kind of make myself a moving target as I return fire. Okay, seems try to keep myself in between uh, the shooter and Doctor Adrian and uh, our nurse friend. Okay, um, tell you what, give me an. Uh... Because, you know, I might need her services in a short bit. <laughs> that, that's very true. <laughs> you do have some bullets in you. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best way. Well, let's... let's hmm. uh, go ahead and spend me a point of sense trouble. And then you will have been looking in the right direction and like seeing where the muzzle flash is. So you have a reasonable place to take a shot back at him. Just uh, hit the roll button. That'll spend it, correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's a general skill, yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't even need to roll. You can just... Um, oh, you can uh, still spend, right, without rolling. Good point. Yeah, you can just go onto the character sheet and hit hit uh, the minus button next to, uh, next to Sense Trouble. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you can go ahead and take your shot. Yeah, the minus button is is grayed out. It's not me. Ah, interesting. That's weird. Oh, oh. I don't know if it lets the spend happen without a roll. Let me just take a look here. It should for general skills or investigative skills. Yeah, what you'd want to yeah, the only way to do it is that you have to hit the plus symbol actually to do the spend. Oh, okay, that's right. It goes the other way. All right. Well, that Shoot is attack. a solid shot for sure. Um, you don't really see the results of it because it's dark over there, but you do hear a loud grunt of pain. Um, then uh, is everybody booking it for the car? I, I'm I'm hauling ass around the side of the side of the house towards the front where they mm -hmm. went, hearing the shots. So I'm coming out with with gun pointed, trying to uh, like give me something to shoot at. Right, but I'm <laughs> but I'm focused on getting to the car and making sure that my friends are safe. Um, Adrian is prioritizing kind of trying to motion to keep the um, um, the people away from the uh, the line of fire. Essentially, the people that we evacuated, trying to like yeah, just they're, motion they're to not no go that way. Following you, yeah, yeah good, 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 good. Just make sure. kind of scattered make sure. into the yard. <laughs> yeah, good. Just want to make sure. Yeah, no, good call. Um, and he's gotten it. All right. Um. There is no further gunfire, uh, and you guys are able to make your way over the wall 
and into the car as you see the uh, the flames starting to spread in the back of the house. I think Alice is going to call to Sal and like, are you good to drive? Are you good to drive? Shall I? Are you all right? Uh, you drive, Alice. I, yeah, I got some. Yeah, this couple. Yeah, you drive. <laughs> and she's just I, got, where's the paper I, I look at you doctor yeah no and i'll i'll just um grab my handbag and it's in here and i'll okay. i'll shove the you know hand them to um to sal like hold on to this and just kind of jump behind the wheel and i'm, I'm loving this eldritch hot potato <laughs> <laughs> well i mean what's it gonna do catch fire um Yes. Yeah, so um, as you guys are, you know, getting in the car, um, I will need James and Sal uh, to both make me some stability checks because you did kill some people in a firefight. Yep. Um, so let's see, where did that go? Uh, it's going to be uh, target number four and a three point cost. Uh Adrian probably just knocked that guy out, and I'm sure he'll wake up before he's consumed by fire, so you don't have to roll for that one. All right, I'm just going to do it straight. I'm not going to spend anything. Okay. All right, so I, you said it was a How much was the cost? Uh, if three points is the loss if you fail. Okay, great. I go down to six. Okay. Sounds like it's a Tuesday. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um. All right, and um, so... James, I mean, and you've probably had this before, the after life and death situation, a little yeah. bit of the shakes. Um, Alice, where are we going? Um, I think Alice, Alice doesn't drive that much that far on the road. So she's, she's just, you know, really concentrated. And I think at first she's driving too fast and then she mm -hmm. kind of tries to slow down and tries to appear normal and uh, she'll look. Is Sal in the in the passenger seat or in the back? Would be in the back, probably. Okay. Yeah, I think well, Ian and I are both in the back. Yeah. Okay. Then ble I'll, bleeding all over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll look. You know, look back. We swerve a little bit and then look to, mm -hmm. to the front and say, "Okay, wh where do we go? I will. We'll need a safe place to. Do we go to the? Yeah. Where do we go? And I'm going to turn to you, Sal, and go. I, I don't need a hospital, Sal. I don't think. Um. I think. I think Alice can can patch me up but i don't how are you do we need to go to the hospital nah i'm good it's just a flesh wound the pumping blood under the floor <laughs> it's not that much blood you're not bleeding out or anything do we go back to the hotel i can i can patch you up there uh, we need to find a new hotel we okay. need to stay away from that do we go to the airport no we'll we'll have to patch you up first um oh gee uh where do we go? Can you Where do we go? Find a parking lot or a building we can get behind. Just, yeah. just yeah. I, we yeah. need to look at Sal. Wait, and we we need to stay. Do we hear um, uh, sirens? sirens or anything? Yes. Or um, yes, you probably see a, a couple of uh, police cruisers uh, whipping past you in the other direction with their sirens on, and a minute or so later, a fire engine. Okay, and I, you know, I'm I'm now I'm at the speed limit, and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's drive a little further, and then we'll park somewhere out of the way. Yep. Stay out sure. of sight. Sure. Yeah. You can find yeah. a, a big parking okay. lot at a, a, a department store somewhere. Yeah. Um, get out, and then I'm like, I'll take back my handbag from Sal, um, which also has some. I would just uh, get used to uh, carrying it. It goes first, well with my outfit. Yeah. Yeah. First, uh, <laughs> well, I'll I'll open it and I'll start like a triage. Like, okay, um, Sal. James, who's who first? Sal? Um, I, I can I can help as well if you need Alice. Yeah. So um, both of them, you know, have have some holes in them, but the good news is they all seem to be pretty clean. Um, yeah. You know, it hasn't hit any bone or any vital organs or anything. Um, so basically, um, just some first aid can help with it. And basically, every point of first aid you spend gives two health back to the affected person. What you got, yeah, because I have, I'm a nurse. I've got special. Go ahead, uh, Mac. Da, 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 da. Oh, well, Heals. each point heals three health points. Oh, that's attention. right, because you're really good at this. <laughs> I'm really, and you know, I'm, I think this actually starts to calm 
Alice down because she's done this before. She's, right. This is no, th these are gunshots. Real she's done this before. Mm -hmm. The mouth freaked her out, but hopefully that goes down. Um, <laughs> and uh, she'll how how much uh, how much uh, damage? I'll spend as much as I need. So I've got I've got uh, ten first aid, so I can spend quite a lot. I I, I am four of twelve uh, in health. Okay, so I'll, I'll spend so. one on uh, on um, on James. Okay, that takes me up to seven. Uh, another one that would take you up to 10 if you, if you if you got it yep sure i got it all right i'll take it i'm up to 10 okay pretty, and pretty uh good shape. sal uh sal's gonna take a minute to look over at james and you know sees the, the kind of the trembles the adrenaline yeah. dump and he says yeah you'll get used to it kid <laughs> <laughs> i actually laugh and shake my head <laughs> uh i'm at four of ten so often I'll also spend uh, two points on you. So that's six. Um, All so. right. Um, sorry, Mac, what did you have? You were going to. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was just um, curious about something. So the bottle didn't actually break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the bottle of? Uh, it was a Beaujolais. You still have it. Did you bring it? Sorry, red wine. Uh, a red wine. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Wait, I don't think this is the type of alcohol that helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't think this will help with. Um, I don't think this works as rubbing alcohol as much, but. Uh... <laughs> Not so much, no. Alice, Alice yeah. is going to reach out, uncork it, <laughs> and, have, and then pass it to Sal and James and said, you know, it Sal works fine for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sal takes a big hit off of it. Yeah, I do the same. All right. Yeah, so you've got everybody pretty well patched up. I mean, there's some some bruises and achiness and that sort of thing, but uh, no no real danger at this point. And remind me, Brian, um, mm -hmm. we all our stuff is at the at the hotel, right? Right. You would move have... to a second hotel, but all your all yep. your stuff that you're not carrying is there now. Um, and I'm trying to remember too. Do we feel like that second hotel is compromised, or was that our I don't believe you have any reason to think anyone knows okay. about that one. All right. So what, as with the patching up is going, um, what, whatever is in there. And I point to Alice's bag. Somebody who says they were important did not want us to have. Uh, in fact, the guy with the rifle out front was trying to stop us from leaving with this. So back to the hotel and put our reading glasses on yeah okay. um yeah do do we still think it's safe enough in los angeles should we get out of here i mean well on the other the cops are going there but w would this would they you know they've got our description it's a big city yeah, and I think we need to. I don't want to leave here until we know what these are. Okay. And just as a as a reminder, since it has been some time since we last played, um, you do know that this Captain Walker guy seems to have a lot of connections and pull within the LAPD. Oh, wait a minute! If that, if that affects your decision making, Captain process. Walker, yes. Captain Walker. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I you do, you uh, he did he did refer to him as Walker. Yeah. Yes. So you're you've made that connection yeah. now that you have a chance to calm down. Yeah. Oh, hey, can we go back and uh, finish that guy up? Uh, oh. No, Sal. Well, that's, we're not going to do that. Um, I think we we hide out in the hotel. We look at this, and then we. Or do we need to get to the airport? Do we need to leave now and look somewhere else? Um. Let's get to the hotel. Yeah. Let's call the pilot. Let's tell him to start the engines and let's head to the airport. We can read it in a plane. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the whole Walker thing is a, is a huge, huge, like click in my mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, um, you make a call to your pilot's hotel. He is, um, not happy to be awakened at four in the morning or so. Uh, but after a little bit of grumbling, he agrees to, you know, go out and start getting things ready for a sudden departure. Um, 
you're able to pack up your paraphernalia, uh, check out and make your way over to the airport. Uh, it's a sort of thing where every time you pass a police cruiser on the road, um, there's that momentary, are they looking at us? You know, are they going to follow us? Anything like that. But mm -hmm. at least for the moment, uh, no one seems to be chasing you actively. Um, where do you tell him that you're going? That I don't know. Because he needs to file a flight plan. Um, San Francisco, some, somewhere not too far away, I think. I'm just saying San Francisco because I know that's somewhere in California. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. here, Mexico's I, nice this time of year. Where? <laughs> Mexico, he said. Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> um, I think somewhere big enough. Some we should be going somewhere that's big enough we can hide, not too far away. Should we go back to Janet? It's too far. Too okay. far. Yeah. Chicago. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, I'd say San Francisco. We, we may have unfinished, yeah, unfinished yeah. business here. Okay. Sal, do you have friends in Vegas? Oops. I got friends everywhere, baby. <laughs> if he's got friends in Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. That's a that's a that's a puddle jump from here. Mm -hmm. That's true. It is pretty yeah. pretty clue shot. And, I'm not uh, sure if it's a mafia city, but hey, we'll give it a chance. Um, in the 30s, it would be. Yeah. Yeah, in the 30s, it definitely would be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got friends uh, there. You know, again, not your not your immediate family, but you know people who know people. All right. So you tell uh, you tell Frank to to spin up a flight plan for Las Vegas, and you get onto the plane and are off. Um, and I think this is probably a good time for us to take a 10 minute break while everyone decompresses a little bit. All right. We'll be back in 10 minutes. All righty.
betting it all on black. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys can make some gambling rolls if you want, but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so you are able to get out um, to Las Vegas with no particular difficulties. Um, this is sort of when Las Vegas, as we know it today, is being built. Um, you know, the the Hoover Dam was completed a couple years ago, and it was basically there were so many workers there that this place grew crazy big as a, you know, getaway resort for those folks. And so all of the old classic casinos are, are being constructed or are there now. And there is a fair bit of organized crime presence there. Um, so I'm imagining you guys there, I mean, are you going to, going to check into the Sahara or are you just kind of getting some cheap little hotel somewhere? I guess before we do any of that, did we learn anything on the plane ride? Yeah, uh, I think we'd be studying it on the plane yeah. ride. Um, sure. A Adrian would have actually um, insisted that we do not immediately look at the papers. Okay. Oh. Okay. Is everyone holding to that? Uh, I'm. Because uh, he knows why, that. Why is that? Uh, fire, 30,000 feet, maybe? Right. We think well. These can do that? No, no, it's not that. It's just we literally just got into a major gunfight, and I know that you already have some hesitations about the planes. We're not going to read more mind bending information when we're just recovering. We're going to wait. I can imagine that James was entirely distracted, That's hadn't thought point. about that he was on a plane. <laughs> yeah, until you pointed it out. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wow. We are, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, so I guess maybe we are going to go to the sands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so you guys get yourselves uh, some nice hotel rooms. Um, you know, uh, the front desk probably gives you a little bit of a fisheye just because some of you are actively bandaged up, but it's not the first time they've seen this. Uh, so they don't make any commentary and they, uh, they see you up to your rooms. Um, um, Alice is going to ask the front desk, like, um, uh, do you get the LA Times here or newspaper? Yes, ma'am. We, uh, we get the LA Times and New York Times. Uh, some of them are, are a little, you know, are, are a day behind, but, uh, LA should be current. Okay. We'll have that by lunchtime. Um, we'd, uh, we'd appreciate if we could get a copy of the LA Times. Of course, ma'am. I'll, I'll have it brought up. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's probably, um, a little after sunrise when you guys get in and, and settle into the hotel. Uh, what's the plan? Well, I think we all, in. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, all gather in a, perhaps we kind of got a suite with, 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 uh, with multiple rooms, just gather in the, sure. in the living room, have the papers all in front of us. And um, I imagine that, this is about when Alice says there was something really not right in that in that place. I agree, not knowing what you're talking about. <laughs> I, is that why you were looking shaken, Alice, whenever I got pulled down, down downstairs? There was something, the room that was locked, um, there was something in the wall. I okay. think it's, it's it, I don't know how to describe it any other way. It, w it was a mouth. There was a mouth in the wall. And it started yeah. screaming. So. Oh, nice. And Adrian, you did hear the scream, by the way. You were close enough for that. Ooh. I did hear a scream, actually. So I Perhaps it was the intensity of the moment that made it difficult to decipher what you're actually seeing. I know. <laughs> I know what I saw. <laughs> Brian, real quick, and how much do I remember about the mouth at the sanitarium that that I saw on the wall? Was no, that was Alice. Was Alice. You saw the stomach. Head. You saw the mouth in your stomach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you had a dream. Oh, that's right. Okay, never mind. I'll be over here. Yeah. Oh, so. all right then. I I believe you, Alice. I just oh, it's something I always have to say just in case you know. So we had, there was a screaming mouth in. A it was building. in the wall. It was run, run by a cult leader. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I hope uh, 
I hope the place burned down. Perhaps we'll read about it in the paper. And what did you, what are these, James? Just so for I, the I, record, I, I may have screamed too. Getting, you know, <laughs> shot at and such. I'm sorry. It, it, it wasn't, I know your scream, Sal, this, this was different. Have you heard my girly <laughs> scream? It was a very manly scream. Very. So <laughs> I kind of re retell um, the circumstances. The guy with no pants um, backed him back off into an office. He was trying to, like, gather up these papers. I gathered them up for him. Um, it's He yelled at the cop uh, that was shooting at us that we had these papers. These are important to whoever that was. I think I heard somebody else something about a testament. Okay. Whenever you, whenever you uh, shoved me into the room, that was one of the last things I heard. They didn't want us to have these. Well, if that Walker guy, he's he's the one who sent the the private eye after us. So, you think this was uh, Tramel, the guy with uh, with no pants? He was important enough. They didn't feel he had to have pants on. <laughs> Oh well. So, who's um, who's going to look at the papers? I, I think it's down for a bit of duty. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, what I have just shared with you is sort of the overview you get from Skimmy these things. I mean, there's a, a lot of paperwork here and it'll probably take, um, you know, a day or two to read through the whole thing. <clears throat> but this at least gives you an idea of what you're dealing with. So I'm going to just quickly read it off for the sure. for those watching. So this manuscript, which appears to be entitled The Testament of the Dripping Mouths Emanates, is comprised of thick sheaf... Uh, of a thick uh, sheaf of papers of varying sizes, some bound together by twine or rubber bands, others just piled loosely together. The text is written in what seems to be just one person's handwriting, and many of the pages are stained or even soaked in what appears to be various bodily fluids. Thin shavings of organic materials, bone, fingernails, and even dried flesh have been inserted between some of the pages. A number of letters and telegrams from various locations around the world have been inserted or in some cases actually pasted into the manuscript. At a glance, the content of the document appears to be part autobiography, part book of revelatory prophecy, and part guidebook to performing various debauched vices. Reading the text in detail seems likely to be very disturbing, but we're going to ignore that part. Okay. <laughs> Um, so you guys planning to read it as a group? I can imagine perhaps we're, it, it's so much, uh, well, do we, do we keep it together or we could, you know, take things out, but then perhaps, you know, well, we it lose... sounds like it's separate documents. Is it, that it does. Accurate? It does seem to have like a couple different sections. So yeah. you might okay. be able yeah. to, to hand those out. Uh, yeah. let me take a look at those, uh, telegrams. Real yeah. Quick. yeah. Um, um, so he's going to be looking for ones um, from Spain, Hungary, and from the Middle East or the Red Sea area. And Africa, you know, perhaps, perhaps that George, uh, yeah, George has. All right. Mm -hmm. So you guys and divvy up the document and start going through it. Um, I will say that around lunchtime, um, they do bring up a copy of the LA Times. Um, there is uh, an article about um, uh, fire in uh, in a, a Pasadena neighborhood. Um, they uh, they suspect arson. There is a not very accurate sketch of James uh, in the picture, um, and there are several other persons of interest uh, mentioned but not described. Um, apparently. Um, while the fire was uh, contained before the building was a total loss, uh, a number of household staff seem to have died in the blaze. Um, and there are, um, you know, the police are investigating to, to try and find them is the extent of what they've got at this point. I don't think they want people to know that it was a full on gunfight. Yeah. Alice is, Alice is going to swear at that. It's like, <laughs> that's not, we got them out. 
I got them out. Well, I mean, if you look at it, the guards were probably out for that, so... That's probably what they were talking about. Alice, you, we got them out, don't worry. Okay, okay. Everybody, everybody was safe. We cleared that. We, we cleared out. out that whole floor, Alice. Okay. They're just trying... They're saying... They're just trying to cover up the fact that it was a firefight. Okay. Yeah, and there is actually a reference in the article that says um, neighbors reported what sounded like gunfire, but police have confirmed that this was just, um, you know, uh, noises from the fire, you know, uh, cans exploding under pressure and that kind okay. of thing. Okay. So they're clearly covering up whatever. You know. It's all right, Alice. We got them out. It's okay. 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 So, does it say how many? Uh, and she, she's just pouring over because does it say it how just many says people? several. Several, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. so, and yeah, that it should be all right. Um, yeah, yeah, and we'll call up for room service, and I think continues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm getting the impression you guys are spending the next day or two, kind yeah. of just chilling out here, reading, you know, reading the testament and and licking your wounds, so to speak. Do um, we send a telegram to Janet, or do we update? I mean, we told her to go to Chicago to stay with Sal's friends. Um, we should at least tell her where we are now so that she knows how well, to keep a communication with us. No, I think, that, that, but I think, but I think, I think she, well, she, she needs to, th this is bad. Well, yeah, but whatever telegram we send, they would be able to trace it back. That's yeah. So yeah. Okay. We, yeah, no, that's, uh, that. Janet should be safe with your friend, Sal. Do you? Yeah. Sal, is there any chance oh. you can make a phone call? Just to check in? Sure. Yes. All right. So basically calling up whoever you um, referred uh, Janet yep. to. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, this is, um, this is going to be Fat Tony. Um, <laughs> and he, uh, you know, he picks up. Yeah, hello. Fat Tony. Sal, hey, Sal. Sal. Here. Yeah, how hey. you doing, man? Ah, been better, been worse. You know, a few scrapes, bruises. How about yeah. yourself? Ah, uh, you know, can't complain. Uh, business as usual. Good. Business is good. Yeah. yeah hey, so. I'm just calling to uh, check on the, the friend that uh, you you are graciously uh, keeping the watch for. It. That, 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 that's great stuff. Uh, yeah, that, so really. so she come up here and, uh, you know, she didn't seem to really know what was going on. And she's actually been real anxious to talk to you and your, your, your buddies there because um, she seems real, like, worried and perplexed. Is there, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on here and I don't want to pry into your business, but uh, is there anything we can, we can tell her? Because she's like, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. And it this sounds good. like that may not be a good thing. Just a second, I'll, I'll cover up the receiver and ask the mm. group um, yeah. if they want to talk to her. Um, I'm an old, I'm an old family friend. I can talk to her. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, Tony, can you uh, put her on for me? Uh, yeah. Give me a minute, and he you know, right. puts the Thanks, phone down, sir. and then and then after a moment or two, you hear hello. And uh, I'll hand that. the phone to, to Adrian. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Adrian on the line. Oh, I, what's going on? I've, I've, I've gone out on a bit of a limb here to come out to Chicago with these people. Why, why am I here? What, what are you finding? I think whatever your father was looking into is something a bit more globally impactful than we were in, first expecting. There's a lot going on here. We just need to make sure that you stay safe. All right. I mean, I, I'm 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 here, but I don't have a lot with me, and I'll, I'll eventually need to get home to start uh, taking care of things. Do um, uh, you think they're looking for me? I don't think they're looking for you specifically, but we just wanted to make sure, at least for now. How long do you think I'll need to stay here? I'm not sure, but we'll keep you updated promise please do this is very disconcerting oh I know. I suppose, don't worry i suppose on one level it's reassuring that that i wasn't just imagining what happened with my father but uh, <clears throat> do be careful and let me know what you know as soon as you can we'll do our best um 
don't know how much I can tell you right now, but we've gotten some ideas of what's going on, some places that we may go, but it's places that extend beyond the uh, the states. All right. Well, let's let's talk about that when you have a little more time and, and we can speak freely. All right. It's good to hear you again. Thank you, Doctor. And hands back to Sal. Okay. Uh, she apparently has hung up. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can always call him back. That's okay. Yeah. I don't want to be disturbing business. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, so one thing that all of you can do is if you look on the top left of your character sheet, there's a thing that says 24 hour refresh. Yeah. Um, so you can go ahead and hit that, which should freshen up many of your pools. Uh, and uh, generally get you uh, topped off a little bit. Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and I'm also going to share some more details on the uh, the testament uh, to give you an idea of what you are contending with. As uh, soon as I get my mouse to work, there we go. Um. Now, I will say that as kind of referenced in there, there are a lot of fairly disturbing things in here. So I am going to need stability rolls from everybody. Um, let me just find my references. Um, it is going to be uh, a target number for five and three points of stability if you fail five point did you say three or five if we uh, three three is the the cost five is the target number okay uh can i spend three you certainly can let me spend one and give it a roll would you say the target was i'm sorry target's five okay then i'll spend oh, three eight. and take the roll okay nice Good one. i'll spend two <laughs> so the good news is apparently splitting this up has uh has really helped because none of you is seeing too much of it at once um obviously the fact that you've spent those stability points means that it is disturbing on some level but none of you are kind of getting the full impact of the whole thing um so there should be another handout there which is now the testament red so i don't know if everybody wants yeah, to yeah, do yeah. like a section um, yeah. the, the first, the summary is basically what you've already read. So, Let's see, uh, in the summary, it says the manuscript goes down many rabbit holes in blind alleys, but after finishing it, a few points are obvious. Uh, Raymond Echevarria had convinced the 1924 cult that they were worshiping an entity called Gold Girl. His inner circle knew that this was a lie and that the cult was actually serving a being called the liar from beyond. After extensive research, Tramel believes that he has found the liar's true identity. He refers to it most often as the black man, but one page refers to it as Niala Totep. Uh, three different locations around the world, Bangkok in Siam, Valletta in Malta and Mexico City appear to be heavily involved in the production and distribution of a substance referred to as nectar. And Tramel's Los Angeles operation appears to be doing the same thing. They are all apparently producing nectar for you, something that is re referred to as a great mouth in each location. <laughs> uh, I'll read Bangkok. Uh, the Testament contains, pasted in its pages, letters from someone identified only as S.S. .S, those are initials to Samson Tramel, discussing the metaphysical nature of the being their cult venerates. SS believes that having this knowledge is critical to the cult and seems to think that Tramel's own conclusions are wrong. SS writes to Tramel in a tone that seems to suggest that they consider themselves Tramel's equal rather than a subordinate. One interesting passage in the correspondence is an explicit invitation to Tramel's personally or any of his Los Angeles followers to quote unquote fight in our rights in Bangkok with explicit instructions on where to go and what to say in order to find the proper location. Do I have a, any sense of time? Um, um, these looks like they cover like the past year or so. Okay. Somewhat recent. Yeah. 
Who wants Mexico uh, City? I'll take Mexico City. Okay. An unfinished chapter in the Testament, mixing handwritten passages and pasted in pages of correspondence, considers the power of a mouse voice or, in quotes, song. Few conclusions are made. The text consists mostly of suppositions and possibilities, like, in quotes, the voice of a great mouth may have the power to enchant or enlighten. The chapter also includes a number of letters from someone called, in quotes, J.B., uh, written on the letterhead of a company called Luz Discos, whose return address is a P.O. box in Mexico City. The letters excitedly discuss, in quotes, our next recording, and, in quotes again, the profound possibilities of a new song. Each of JB's letters is more grandiose and more defensive than the last. It seems clear that the author of these letters was not delivering the results that Trammell anticipated. The letters promise, in quotes, a new experience to rival that of Nectar, in quote, and promise that the, in quotes, Nectar dis distribution will return to its original rates once we've prepared our album, in quote. Numerous references are made to someone called De La Luz and how the next record will change everything, in quotes. The last letter is dated in early June, just a few weeks ago. A slew of blank pages separate that letter from the next chapter, presuming, presumably leaving room for future correspondence. And I can take Valletta. Mm -hmm. A short chapter in the Testament handwritten in early 1935, offers a short treatise on various methods of, quote, increasing the yield of emanates from the most holy orifices of the thing, end quote. It proposes a series of particular and depraved acts that would be theoretically pleasing to the thing with a thousand mouths, and therefore stimulate additional nectar production. But the only hard data provided refers to, quote, particular experiments conducted by Montgomery Donovan in Malta, end quotes. These experiments apparently demonstrate that a, quote, potent sacrifice can multiply by many times the blessing of our God's sputum. A letter page folded into the leaf where this chapter was recorded appears to be a record of daily nectar production in Valletta in the early part of 1935. Production seems to have been relatively constant up until a particular date, March 18th, after which it nearly tripled, almost overnight. Hmm. The date is marked with a star. All right, well, I can mix some sense of some of these things. Let's see. Obviously, this is a drug operation. Yeah. Um, it certainly sounds like it. And... There's a lot of talk of mouths, Alice. Um, it sounds like mouths that were in each of these locations that's producing this nectar. I think I saw one of them. I, when I when I shut the door, it sounded like it spat something. So, but okay, so we found some kind type of cult that has some supernatural. I don't know what it is making. Drugs. And this is what Janet's dad was looking into was broke up. We've got the answer for Janet in any case, but what do we do now? Yeah, I think that's the question, friends, is we can come back to Janet and say, your father got mixed up with organized crime, uh, a global ring that was producing. Well, he was uh, fighting sort of, it. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I think I think that's what caused this to happen. Um, but does that mean we're done? All right. Well, so we know that whatever was happening in California whenever back whenever this all began they were there was something involved with mouths as well whatever their ritual was was concerning this same entity as as we heard from our friends back in savannah 
All right, let's see. They're talking about an album, and Alice, I remember I heard a scream, and you said you heard a scream as well. It screamed. And you were particularly disturbed by it. I could see it. Well, it's not so much the scream as it, there's this mouth in the wall that's... Yeah, well, that didn't help. Um, uh, it probably didn't help, but if they're recording the album and went to effectively enhance the cell nectar usually drugs are taken as a way to cope with what one experiences if they're trying to spread that out do we know uh, i mean do we know if this is a really bad drug well okay drugs are bad but uh, <sighs> Yeah, I mean, all you really know, I mean, you have those ledgers of a sale of something referred to as N, which is presumably this yeah. nectar. Um, but I mean, while they get pretty good money for it, there's no real indication of what it is or what it does yeah. from any of the information you have at this point. So I, I, I think the point is we we got the answer for, for Janet. And. OK, apparently her dad was fighting and at least temporarily disrupted this supernatural drug lab, whatever it is, cult. They're back at it again. Um, they've got the police or somebody in the police, that Captain Walker, uh, in their pockets. Um, I'm, I just, I mean, Janet's, we've got Janet hiding out in Chicago. Uh, to keep her safe. Um, we found out what she wanted to know. I'm just wondering, I mean, where do we go from here? What do we do? Are we, are we going to try and shut down this operation? Or I mean, is, is that's not what she hired us to do, but. So I don't like that this exists in the world. And I want to do something about it. And I don't think we have enough to know, but I think we now have some places we can go. The problem is money. And I think what this is going to come down to, and I'm going to turn to you, Adrian, do you think she will fund us fighting, continuing the fight that her father fought? I was the one she called whenever her father started to deteriorate. Whenever I got back home from my studies, I was a. I saw how much it ate away at her seeing him like that. I think if she knows that that has a chance of happening again, I don't think she'd want it to ever happen again. Can you call her uh, or Sal, if you can arrange for a phone call and tell her that her father was doing a good thing, uh, a thing that could, could save a lot of people and he stopped it, but it's back again. And I'm willing, I can't speak for the three of you, but I'm willing to continue her father's work. I think we should be more concrete about it. I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm game. I'm game, but I think she, this may, if, if she, we're looking into it, into this because of her, for her, and they might, you know, if she's going to continue paying for us, um, they might link it back to her. I mean, we, we, we got her into, into hiding um, just as a precaution. Um, we got out of LA. We, we, we have to hope they don't link us to the plane. They don't link it to the plane. It's her plane. Is that she's running a risk. I mean, perhaps that Captain Walker, the, they told us to stop looking to get out. I think this is the chance for her at least to get out. Um, so I think we should tell her at least, perhaps not about the supernatural part entirely, but just 
just tell her we fit, you know, what we've uncovered is he was looking into this, well, criminal drug ring, something he disrupted it and it started up again and just be honest about it is that they tried to shut us down. If we continue looking into this, they're probably going to try and come after us. So. Yeah. I'm fine with being as transparent yeah. as we feel comfortable with. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. We, we need her money. We need her plane. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, Adrian. Well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, perhaps it'll be a lot easier if we have her help and her resources. So, and otherwise, uh, we can take it from them. Doctor, do you feel you can have that conversation? I feel like you're the closest to her. I'll do my best. Um, and then she knows, then she can decide whether or not she'll be staying in Chicago or whether or not she'll, you know, be doing as if everything's fine. Yeah, we should, we should definitely pass along that she could be, she could still be in danger if we continue this. Um, Sal generally keeps a very good, you know, ear to the streets. Um, has he heard mention of in or, or nectar mm. or something before, like that before? It does not ring a bell as anything you've heard of in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Different part of the um, country. Yep. Yeah. Although, let me just look at one thing. Do I have that handy here? Um. It's hard to be sure. But there was, when you, when Sal first started um, getting involved in occult things back mm -hmm. in Chicago, there was a, there was a group, you know, that was, that was making inroads that, that you guys came up against and, um, eventually uh, led to some deaths of some people that you were pretty close to. And you never heard a reference to Nectar or anything like that. But now that you think back about it, one of the guys, um, you know, when you were talking to him when he was tied to a chair, um, <laughs> did say something about a mouth that didn't make any sense to you mm. at the time. But hearing this, it feels like that might be connected to what was going on there. Okay. As, as far as you know, the Chicago branch has been wiped out, but. Yeah. I will pass this information on freely to my uh, compatriots. Um, in addition. So it would seem to me that, you know, we need to make, uh, find a way to, uh, you know, should she provide resources? We need to, find a way to make these resources clean. Now, I know some friends who own a legitimate business service that can help. If you'd like, I could ask. I mean, they would probably require some sort of uh, fee or cut. But, uh, you know, if it's good for the mafia, it's good for, for, for us. Oh, just sing it, sing it right out, sing it right out. Okay. All right then. Oh yeah, I mean his, his his dagger that he uses has the the. I mean anybody who's got streetwise knows that that's a mafia dagger. Yeah. Well, I th I think we we need to ask Janet. You know, is this what she wants us to continue pursuing? I mean, we we tell her we found out that she, um, her dad was fighting some kind of unnatural drug operation um, and that he, well, successfully temporarily got it kind of shut down, but it's come up again. And, you know, and that the fact is, is we've opened the box so that they know somebody's looking into it. Um, we have, we haven't found out all the details yet, um, but we have a chance now they're trying to scare us away is that if we stop looking now it might the box might close again 
and she you know she can move on she can she knows her dad tried to do something good and temporarily succeeded or um if she's you know we're willing to you know keep looking into this because there's still some open questions um and do what we can to to shut this down and does she want to help us if as long as she knows that you know um we've got options that any help from her can be you know covered as much as possible but um i can imagine she doesn't want to stay in chicago with sal's uh cousin um cousin vinny uh it's uh, uncle world. sorry it's uncle vinny oh uh, uncle vinny um or cousin tony I we're all yeah. right yeah <laughs> all one um, big family <laughs> yeah it's all one big family but she um you know it's 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 up to her that you know and if she wants and i'll look at the others if she wants us to stop because this you know it might get back to her that we will and i'll kind of end that on a question mark as you know that it might be an option that we might continue on if she stops funding us and even if she might ask us to stop, just like, if she says stop, do we stop? I think we'd let's, let's figure that out if we have to figure that out, which right now we don't. So I think a lot comes down to what, what, what happens in this next conversation. Um, Sal, if you can arrange for the phone call and doc, if you're up for this conversation. Yeah. Sal, will will make right. a call. Mm -hmm. um, to yeah, Tony, to see you. Yeah. Is this? I'm assuming this is the next day or something. So. Yeah, this is like you guys probably spent a day or so reading this yeah. thing and resting up, and now this is like, okay. so it would be the day after you made the original call. Hey, okay. we're here. Are you okay? And did we read anything in the following paper? Was there any anything further about the, from the LA Times? Any further stuff no about the fire or anything? Nope. All right. <clears throat> so you um, you call back up and get back on the phone with uh, with Janet Winston Rogers. Um, she says, "So what um, what can you tell me?" I think I understand why everything your father went through drove him to how he was whenever I came back home. Janet, okay. Jan, this is. This is something big. He was fighting for a very good cause. He was trying to protect a lot of people. Caught, caught up in organized crime that goes a bit beyond what we may know back home in New York. Okay. And I think you know me. If it's something that can leave people like the state your father was in, then I'm not going to back away from it. You know how far I've gone to help people. But we don't want to make you stay involved in this. We don't want you to get hurt. So it's up to you. The level of what we want to do is going to require funds, but that doesn't mean it has to be yours. Can you tell me, can you give me some more details about what you're looking at? I hear you saying that he was helping people and, and going up against something big. What, what are we talking about? Is something I, I don't think I've ever seen before. It's just all these matters of, of cult, trying to produce some sort of drug called nectar and uh, something about, I don't know, auditory hallucinations or something. I, I don't even know if they're hallucinations, but we're trying to produce more of the drug and give people a reason to need it. They're going to try and get a lot of people's heads for that. This is something that's been going on for longer than whenever your dad started getting involved. Well, and if it's, we've already seen the effect it has on people. If you are willing to keep going after this, this, these people ruined my father's life and it sounds like they're in the process of destroying a lot of others my father 
was a very wealthy man and he's dead. My husband was a very wealthy man and he's dead. I would be glad to fund your operations if you think you have what you need to take these people down. I think we have something. We have a good few leads, places to go, people to talk to, things to look into. Okay. Frank is, uh, as I say, uh, at your service. He's uh, gotten in touch with me and, and just given me some updates. He obviously doesn't know what you've been investigating, but I know where you are. And uh, I've told him to, to give you what you need, whatever he can provide. And Jan, if this ever does get too much for you, I can see about getting back in contact with my family. The last thing oh. I want is for you to get hurt for this. I think what would, I don't want to say drive me mad, that's inappropriate, but what would, what would trouble me is not knowing. So I know you're not always in a position to keep me informed as to what's going on, but please, as often as you can, uh, I want to know what you found. And if, if these people are as dangerous as you say, and I hate to, to put this into the world, but if something does happen to any of you, I don't want to lose what you've learned. Entirely. And Jen, you have, his voice kind of gets shaky for a bit. Mm -hmm. You've known me since we were kids, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know that I've always had love for science, always tried to reason everything. Yes. This is something new. I don't know if I can make out reason out of it. You know how slow I am to believe in supernatural, but I think it's about time I broaden my horizons of research. You haven't been taking any of these drugs, have you? Oh, no, trust me, no. <laughs> you know I don't like an adult mind. No, no. Well, I trust your judgment, so do what you think you need to do and just let me know what you found, what you find. You stay safe, okay? You too. If, if you don't think they have any connections to me at this point, I think I'm going to go back to New York. I appreciate all of the effort that's been put to here and, um, uh, Mr. Ricardo's friends, while a slightly different social circle than I usually run in, have been very <laughs> kind and accommodating. Because uh, if, I... if they weren't being kind, you know, I'd have to come up there and beat them up for you, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I believe you'd do it too. Um, but I think I'd feel better if I were on familiar ground uh, and could work with people I know. So, of course. Uh, um, unless anyone has any strong objections, you can you can reach me back in New York. All right then. Do thank Mr. Ricardo for his his friend's hospitality. Well, do Jan. All right. Take care of yourself. You too. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you still have money and a plane and a pilot. Yeah. I think we were all kind of huddled around <laughs> listening. Mm -hmm. And then I think, look at Sala's line. We, we need to, perhaps with your friends, we, we need to set up some kind of Dropbox system, um, send updates, safe, house, safe places, and to get that to Janet. And I think we shouldn't be doing it directly. No more telegrams to her directly or other stuff, but just indirect your um uh, uh cousin tony can uh, can probably bring, bring her into contact and um yeah well, we'll see what they they can do they uh mm -hmm. they're family but there's they're, they're a limit to their generosity yeah, no. that way. <laughs> I mean, I think it's reasonable that Sal could say, hey, can we get a P.O. box set up in New York and have somebody go there every couple days and deliver this to her house? Yeah. Great. Um, and so, I, I, 
don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. Good deal. And so, I I think you all heard it. Um, just kind of, besides kind of Pedley saying that there was no kind of privacy to this conversation, <laughs> just, I imagine you heard it, but she did want me to thank you. And I I do hope you know that I was serious when I said I would go up there and beat them up if they did anything to us. I have hit people with guns with my umbrella. You have seen it in person. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking guys with lots of guns. Though they do have a sense of humor. <laughs> All right. Well, so, I think I'm going to go back into research mode. I can see a few connections already that I won't dive too deep into, but I have some ideas. All right. You know, I, w I was thinking, you know, we, we can't openly talk about the cult, right? We just can't go around saying cult. How about we call them the Irish mob? Yeah, that's it. The Irish mob. The <laughs> okay. <Salicardo>? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we come up with another. No, I really like the Irish mob. That has a certain ring to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think we're going to all shift to uh, figuring out next steps. All right. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say is that since you guys have uh, basically finished a chapter, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. um, everybody gets a point to add to a skill or uh, or trait of their choice. Uh, and you can also move a point from one skill to another if you want. You don't need to do it right this second, but mm -hmm. uh, remember that you have the option. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess the question would be, where next um <clears throat> i can tell you from uh you know frank can let you know that he can certainly uh get you to say of the of the locations you know obviously la is still in range mexico city he could certainly get to the other two are outside the range of his plane so you'd need to yeah. make other arrangements well i think and i'll look to james i said that that must have been Tramel. We stole this testament from, so he knows we has we have the testament. He knows the three places that are mentioned in this. So I think there's a pretty good chance that he knows where at least one of the that we might be heading there. Yeah, I I I, I what I what I don't. He, I don't get a sense that he knows exactly who we are. No. Um, he claimed to not know who I was. Mm. Um, there's a possibility that he thinks we are adequately frightened off. Who knows? Mm. Um, but yeah, we, well, we're we not going, I don't think we're going anywhere friendly. No. Well, Mexico so City's close by. But that's perhaps the most obvious place to go. Brian, in our readings, and as mm -hmm. we're discussing and exchanging information, is there a sense of uh, one of those locations being more time sensitive, if that makes sense? I wouldn't say any more time sensitive. Uh, I would say of the three, um, Valletta is certainly producing the largest quantity of nectar. Okay. Um, and Mexico City seems to be producing the least, uh, although apparently they have this other thing going on with the album, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bangkok is somewhere in the middle. Um, but none of them sound, you know, there, there's nothing like, oh, well, once we reach October, our plans right. will come to fruition okay. kind of thing. Uh, um, I will. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, it does appear that um, Mexico City, whatever was happening, was actively happening because the most recent letter was just a few weeks back, and there's space for um, mm -hmm. communication. Yeah, all of the communication is is relatively current. You know, in the last month or two. Okay. Um, I would also say that Alice, um, you are at least broadly familiar with Valletta in Malta mm -hmm. uh, because during the war, that was one of the main places where wounded soldiers were brought to mm -hmm. convalesce. They called it the nurse of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you spent any time there, but you certainly yeah, know I probably did. about it. Yeah. 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 So. And for the record, I don't think James has a strong opinion. So I think mm -hmm. I'll be really leaning to the two people I consider smarter than Sal and I. Um, uh, uh, hey, 
on this decision making. So uh, I wouldn't verbalize that, but you you don't see me saying or pointing to anywhere on a map. Well, I know Valletta. Sal, do you do you have any contacts in Mexico? I don't think so. It's no, not a it's friendly it. nation to you know my <laughs> friends. Malta. Well, it is Mediterranean, so there might be, but I, I have no contacts there. I mean, it's it's a shot in the dark. It had to be a friend of a friend of a friend, and mm. you know. Hey, Brian, I have a question. Mm -hmm. From our travels within the states, um, have there been any customs inspections of the plane that were you're traveling in, or, or anything like that? No, within the country, it's it's pretty smooth sailing. Um, and honestly, depending on where you go, um, obviously, you don't know what customs is like in, say, Mexico or any of the other places. Mm -hmm. um, you're sure that like <clears throat> planes uh, coming back from Mexico or Bangkok or places like that would certainly get some kind of customs inspection. Okay. Because Sal is tired of being outdone. Um, <laughs> He's going to go try to find, you know, utilize his street contacts and, and his credit to try credit rating to try to obtain, you know, a couple of Chicago typewriters. Oh, 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 oh. it's going to be like that. Um, all right, let's see what we can do about that. I mean, you are in a city where you have connections. Uh, and it is not unheard of for such things to be utilized in Las Vegas at this time period. Um, I would say that if you will spend me a point of streetwise and a point of credit rating, because this is not really something you can expense back to Janet easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I will let you uh, bring home two Thompsons. Okay, sounds good. Um, and one. James approves, by the way. <laughs> point there. Now the point is three wise. Go. All right. Go. So next time we get to look at automatic weapons fire. <laughs> <laughs> Does Alice and Adrian know where we're going? Oh, Mexico City's closer. We can perhaps uh, sneak in, sneak in over the border. Um, I guess the question there is that that would just be bringing us further away from Europe, and it would be a longer travel there. Well, I mean, Europe's always far away, so. Yeah, no. um, I mean, uh, I think all three places that they might be expecting us, but I think if we, um, yeah, I don't know. I say either Malta or we go to Mexico City because they're, they're they're doing something new. I think let's let's do Mexico City. I think Mexico I City, they're trying to fix something. They're trying to do something. It's not working. Let's make sure it doesn't work. Um, All right. And I mean, that they're, they're already producing nectar, that they're producing more. That's, that's whatever it is. But let's, while we can have Frank, or perhaps maybe Frank has some contacts, or do, do you, Sal, do you have, because I'm thinking, um, they might be able to trace Frank back to Janet. And Frank was reporting where we were to Janet, which is, which is fine. But um, I think perhaps we need to get into the country less um, official. Yeah. Less official. And perhaps Frank, if you don't have, perhaps Frank, Frank has the contacts as we get into the, we, we, um, get into uh, Mexico a little less official with 
the hardware that you've gotten. Yeah, and, and I it's... think yeah. that between Sal and I, we could potentially hide some cargo uh, in a car. And if we're in Vegas, mm -hmm. and that is a reasonable driving distance to Mexico mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. So uh, I I think I'm starting to be swayed by Alice, which is maybe let's leave Frank here in Vegas. We can always come back here if we need him. Um, or we send Frank somewhere else. Or we send Frank somewhere else, which is a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. And let's let's drive to Mexico City. Okay. And I think okay. that we need to, and I'll point towards the the manuscript. And I think we still have the book. I think we need to split these things up and send them to safe places. We'll make notes. I don't think we should be carrying them with us. I think that's good yeah. too. So we'll, we'll copy the information we need. Mm -hmm. Okay, then... I'm already on it. <clears throat> and uh, where are uh, where are they going? Sal. Yeah. Any. I don't know. Well, safety deposit box somewhere. Um, let's see here. You know, I may be able to send it to my girlfriend to hold on for it. You know, Bianca may, you know. Okay. Do you tell her that this weird collection of papers is coming to her or just yes absolutely I, I, will, <laughs> I will i will absolutely call tell her it's business and ask her to hold on for it to that she, i would assume story. she knows what that means right and not to <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's been around um, sal long enough and the only contention i'll put to that sal is that if you can make sure she knows that if too much time passes I don't know how you want to phrase this because it's your girlfriend, but basically if she doesn't hear from us, that needs to go to Janet. Okay. I can certainly, uh, certainly just Janet made a big point to Dr. Adrian can, that convey that to her. Yeah. yeah. We well, better call me more often than Sal. I haven't heard from you in weeks. Where you been all this time. Anyway, you, you going around with somebody else, huh? Ah, no, nah, no nah, business. You know, yeah, uh, it's all. I have business. a, I have a few more scars to show you when I get home. Yeah, yeah and I, yeah, I imagine at that point in time, you know, <laughs> she can perhaps hear Alice's voice in the background talking to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that? Who's that in your room? You got some floozy? Nah, it, it, it's it's one of my associates' friends. Uh huh. <laughs> when you send me this book, you better send me something nice. That's all I'm saying. I can certainly do that. <laughs> All right. So that is the, the testament accounted for. Um, what are you going to tell Frank? I think Frank knows enough that we're um, doing dangerous stuff. And we'll say, you know, we spoke to Janet. I don't know if she updated you. Um, we're going to continue doing dangerous stuff. Um, and we want to make sure that Janet stays safe. So um, we need a bit of a distraction and we need to kind of break the link between us and Janet. So I think if you could head towards, and I'll look to the others. If we I hear can Phoenix kind of make, is nice this time of year. Yeah. Phoenix. Or Seattle. Or Se yeah, Seattle. If you head to Seattle and per uh, yeah. Seattle, who lives in Seattle? I think we could figure out a hotel um, and just say, you know, take take a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks off. And this is where you'll be. We'll reach out to you here. Okay. And let you know what our what's next. All right. Well, uh, if you if you need to get out of, of Mexico in a hurry, Seattle's a little bit of a hike. So uh, let me know when you know. But uh, just. Uh, just don't do nothing crazy, okay? What? Us? <laughs> we'll be all right. Take care. All right. Well, you too. I hope uh, hope it all goes all right. Uh, and then I imagine everybody, um, you know, after another day of chilling out, you guys can rent a car. Actually, hmm. Hmm. 
for international you'll probably need to buy a car yeah that's what i'm thinking is we'll we'll buy something that'll get us there something that uh, maybe sal and i can get creative with um <laughs> to get through certain items through customs um yeah and you know it, it is obviously an investment to do that but you know janet is is true to her word and she you know reimburses you for what it is um and then we're going to have a lovely scenic drive down to Mexico City. Um, may I ask something? Sure. Because Adrian goes into deep research mode. Um, <laughs> um, just curious, from his time um, as an academic in Germany, um, did he ever come across the author Frederick Wilhelm von Kuntz? Um, Let's see. Do you have any opinions? Cult, Adrian. I see the room I do that not, you do but not. I have a library here. If they just keep have... occult stuff in the library, <laughs> <laughs> or they keep not the good stuff, stuff in the library, no, not the good stuff. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, I would say probably not. He's pretty obscure unless you're mm -hmm. interested in that particular sort of niche. Mm -hmm. That's fair, that's fair, yeah. and I think that while, um Sal was stocking up on weapons. I think Janet would be looking into getting as much, you know, sophisticated first aid mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and um, buying morphine in bulk and yeah. morphine and you know just bandages and just getting really like a a proper war nurse mm -hmm. kit, pretty much. Nice. Yeah, going uh, back to bottles, sort of recreate what you yeah. had in the field. Yeah, yeah. I bottles by these solution. Yeah. and uh, yeah. sedatives that type of mm -hmm. stuff and, uh, mm -hmm. makes perfect sense yeah. all right well given that i did not know that you guys were going to finish la today and did not know where you were going to go next this is probably a good time for us to bring this episode to a close we can roll some credits and talk about it afterwards and then uh look forward to our next session in the near future yeah. Yeah, so let's uh, let's run the credits, and we'll see you on the other side. Be right back. <laughs> See, nobody died. Nobody even no. went crazy. It's fine. <laughs> so, In the GM oh, branching sorry. trees, um, <laughs> did we go on any branch that you anticipated or did we uh, surprise you today? Well, honestly, once you guys decided, okay, we're storming the mansion, that, that kind of locked in a certain path. Mm -hmm. Um I'm not going to say anything more than that for, for sure. spoilery reasons, but I mean, you got 
um, the the big clue out of there, which is here's all this international stuff going on. Yep. Um, so yeah, that uh, kind of went where I want to go. It, there's there's definitely the groundwork for interesting things to happen in the future. I'll put it that way. Um, but yeah, this is the point where the campaign kind of blossoms open, and you've got you know obviously in LA you had a bunch of different little roads to travel, but now it's it's a whole thing. So I'm I'm really excited to we're in we're in Act Two now for lack of a better term. So I'm looking. My last question before course. you ask yours is. Um... I want to get, cause I know this has been remixed uh, by Mr. Alexander. Can mm -hmm. you give a sense of uh, like the percentage impact uh, of his work? I would say maybe 20, 25%. Um, a lot of it is just little notes. And uh, you know, one of, one of Justin's really good skills is threading clues into places so that you're yeah. always going to find a way to something. And he's got a couple, a couple very good cases of, putting this clue here and here so you can there are multiple ways to get there Good. um there's actually um he has created a whole new an additional location that you guys oh, wow. may or may not eventually be led to um as part of this so there's like a big chunk that is uh you know is kind of optional uh that we may wind up adding but um yeah, in general, I mean the the overarching thing is very much the same. He's just got a uh, it's just tidied up in a lot of ways. Sure. And if someone, if there's potential keepers watching that want to run Eternal Lies, where can they? Do you know where you got your Justin info? Um, I got it at the Alexandrian. Let me find the exact link. Um, um, I'll put I'll put it in the uh, so. Uh, by tomorrow i'll have it below but i'll find it on the alexandrian yeah yeah yeah. it's basically the alexandrian.net and if you look for the eternalized remix excellent uh, that will have everything you need he's got a ton of handouts and props and reference data and and historical data it's really an amazing resource if you're if you're thinking about running this yeah and and i'll take this opportunity to plug his book um on how to become a, a game master it's a phenomenal book it really is um and Justin, Seconded. Justin has been on the show on the podcast as well. So big mm -hmm. fan of Justin. Yep. Uh, right. So what I was going to say was, Chris, tell me about your stars and wishes. Um, stars was difficult for this one because there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I really think that when Alice turned on the stove, um, <laughs> Stalin is, you know, Sal believes that Alice is like a wolf's in cheap clothing or in cheap <laughs> skin, skin because, I mean, she's just as vicious as, as he is, it seems. I mean, blowing up places and things. Oh, absolutely. Um, so that's my star. Um, but it was close. There was a lot of, like I said, good role play and, and good things that, that, you know, went back and forth. Yeah, for wishes. Sure. Um, I didn't know that I have any specific wishes. I do like the tempo. Um yeah. That's I like this kind of tempo. I like the kind of pressure. Uh, this trip, we, you know, we've got this downtime between here and Mexico City as kind of a pressure relief valve. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I anticipate, you know, hopping from the frying frying pan into the fire in Mexico City. Excellent. All right, uh, Mac, how about you? Um, I think one of one of my stories was um, whenever um, Sal and James happened upon Alice and um, Adrian going the exact opposite direction that they were wanting. <laughs> oh, we want you out. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah. Oh, it turns out we're actually about to uh, explode this place. <laughs> uh, I, uh, um, wishes. I um, I guess it's a it's a bit of a selfish one, but it's just I want to I. I have a note page that I'm going to send to all of you that I've just written in the last like five minutes of mm -hmm. things that Adrian has connected that I really want to say. Uh, yeah. And, and feel free to plug that into the, uh, the journal on the, on the forge as well, if it makes it easier. Oh, entirely. To, uh, for me to keep this is what it looks like within five minutes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. More red string. <laughs> I'm just, it's going to be a mess when I finally get the red string. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Forward to it. All right, cool. Um, Naomi, um, I think the star was, um, 
I think uh, James going after Mr. No Pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, okay. And, and you know, gathering up the, the papers and uh, mm-hmm. not, not killing him, actually. I mean, I mean, you, I think you shoot people who shoot at you, but you yeah. can shoot an, un- un- an, unarmed, uh, an unarmed man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and I, well, and also just the, the theorizing with us and like, okay, what do we do now? Do we continue? Where do that part of it is just like, okay, um, the part of, okay, we got hired to do this. Uh, how do we continue on? Do we continue? Yeah. So I really, I really enjoyed that part. I think Sal's going to have to uh, get with uh, James and say, oh, leaving these these people behind, that may be bad business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I can tell you, had he said uh, had he said my name, uh, there would have been a different but, uh, absolutely <laughs> different yes for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that saved his life, whether he was telling the truth or not. Um, you got a wish for us? Um. Oh, well, as I think, just like uh, Chris said, I really like the pacing and just, you know, this really feels like we're investigating stuff, we're discovering stuff, we're, we're making links and it's, um, you know, I, there's this whole sandbox we can play around and, you know, we're finding our way and not being um, railroaded. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, railroad has its purposes every now and yep. then, but you know, it's just like, we're on this unique adventure. So I'm, yeah, more of that. <laughs> you got it. Greg, what you got? Um, so stars for me was really the, the entire mansion sequence. Um, I, my favorite moments in, in role-playing is when I lose track of outside of the game. Right. So I'm running the stream. I've got a lot of stuff in front of me, you know, when, when we're streaming, when I'm running a game, let alone when I'm playing. And I wasn't looking at viewer counts. I wasn't looking at, I, like I was in the game. Um, and that's, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. When my I lose. Yeah. That's, that, that makes me really happy. And wishes is, um, I am actually as a player, very anxious to see, what we're going to find in these places. This is, um, and I, I I want to continue to feel like we are playing a classic Cthulhu investigative game, right? I mean, we all hear about the, you know, the world spanning call of Cthulhu trail of Cthulhu type stuff. And now we get to do it. Uh, so I just, I wish to continue. That's all. Um, and for those of you watching on uh, live, we're going to be back in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously follow all the socials and everything to, uh, can, can to I keep do track. mine? What's that? Can I do mine in a second? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the big thing is the return of forbidden lands, which is coming yes. up this, this Thursday. Um, you know, we've taken about four months off and we have shocker left our, uh, <laughs> main characters in a bit of a, a bit of a pickle. And, uh, we get to finally find out what happens with them. But, uh, yes, Brian. Talk, tell you. us thank you um i mean I, I think everybody had some some great moments here you know i i loved uh you know everybody was not only being effective during the the mansion sequence but everybody was doing it all in character yeah. i think my favorite single moment might have been adrian clocking that guy with a bottle of wine um <laughs> just because the dice were so perfect um but i was i was really happy about that uh as far as wishes go um, this is less of a wish because I'm the keeper and I can make this happen, but I'm starting to get to the point now where I can start weaving more of the characters backstories into nice. what's going on here. Yeah. And I'm really interested to see where that leads and kind of personalize the campaign a little bit. Very cool. So, uh, this is a lot of fun. I, I want to, I want to keep this going cause you guys are great. All right. The same. We'll see everybody soon. Thank you. Thanks y'all. Carol.
Howdy friends, thank you for watching. All our content is archived and organized in playlists on the Third Floor Wars YouTube channel. Check it out. And if you could like, follow, subscribe, and even set your notifications to this channel on YouTube and Twitch, we'd appreciate it and it'll make sure that you catch all of our content. I talk with creators, designers, and experts across the gaming landscape in every episode of our podcast, Tabletop Talk. Open up your favorite podcatcher and search for Tabletop Talk from Third Floor Wars. Support your creators. They make the content you love, and it's your support that makes it happen. If you want to help us, go to Third Floor Wars on Patreon.com, and you can help us for as little as a dollar a month. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Take care.